In just a moment, we'll be joined by the head coach, Dana Altman, right here in the main interview room. Just a reminder while joining us, please silence all cell phones and refrain from flash photography. No video recording devices are permitted here in the main interview room. That includes mobile phones. A reminder that throughout the weekend and throughout the Final Four, anywhere here at the University of Phoenix Stadium, publishing live to social media is not permitted at any time. If you need the satellite information, stop in with Hammond Communications in the back of the room, or you can come up and ask me. I have that up here as well. Uh, we'll be joined by head coach Dana Altman uh, right now, and he'll be with us from 12.30 to 12.50 p.m. In about 10 minutes, we'll have student athletes from Oregon join us. All five starters are uh, expected to be here in the main interview room at that time. Coach, you want to make an opening statement or just take some questions? I will just take questions. Okay. We're looking for the first question for Coach Altman from Oregon. We know we've started a minute or two early here, so we'll let the crowds come and swell. Yeah, yeah. Fill up the room. Coach, if you want to just give us a couple thoughts on how practice went yesterday and just updates on the health of your team right now as you head toward tomorrow. Um, well, first of all, this is the kind of press conference I like. Um, but uh, no, the guys worked out good yesterday, and uh, uh, you know, it was very nice setup for the uh, facility. I think it's going to work out pretty good. Uh, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll shoot it well. It didn't seem to bother them too much yesterday. So, uh, like the facility, you know, everyone here in Phoenix has been great to us. So it's been pretty smooth. Sounds good. We have a question on the left side for Jim. Thank you, Coach. Jim Roop with Westwood One. The understatement of the year the other day when you said 1939 was a long time ago. How have you done, and how has the team, you sort of talked about a little bit just now, but getting them from, from that moment of everything that they have done this year surprised a lot of people. And now here you are on this big stage for the first time in 78 years. How do you bring that to their, to be in the moment, their consciousness, if you will? I think the guys have done a pretty good job. Uh, you know, it is difficult with all the media attention and, um, um, you know, the hype that surrounds the Final Four. It's, it's hard to keep them focused and keep them uh, thinking about the ball game. But uh, they've done a great job in our film sessions. Um, yesterday in practice, they were pretty focused after they got loosened up. Um, so I, th I think the team is really looking forward to this. As all players, they've dreamed about this for a long time. And, and now it's here. And, you know, our job as coaches, try to keep them focused and try to get them ready, you know, to play their best. And uh, I, I think we're in that mode. I, you know, I, like you said, I like the way we attacked the film sessions. I like the way we attacked practice yesterday. Uh, I hope we go out and have a, a sharp shooting workout here that we're going to do for 50 minutes. Our open practice is basically going to be our, our uh, game day shoot around. So hopefully the guys will, will be sharp during that and, and get ready to play tomorrow. Next question right in the center. Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Dean, I know you were asked about this yesterday, but the situation three years ago with Austin, Artis, and Dotson, I'm just wondering if, if you learned anything about, about that as a coach and looking back, if you, or, I mean, not looking back, but if you were presented with a similar situation now, how you would handle it? Well, if, if something like that were to rise again, um, you know, I, Everything that I did in that situation uh, was with the advice of the university. Um, you know, I didn't make any decisions. Uh, you know, the university was involved in everything. So I think if we were ever in a situation again, uh, uh, you know, I'd look to my athletic director and, and uh, the people above me to, to make any decisions. Let's go to the left side of the aisle, toward the right. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. Dana, I talked with Larry Riley uh, earlier this week. Do you remember the day you went into his office in 1980 and said you wanted to be a basketball coach and he told you you were nuts? Yeah, I do. Uh, coach was uh, you know, great to me for the two years I played for him. And uh, you know, I had thoughts of going to law school and doing some different things. But uh, you know, I decided I wanted to go get a master's degree and get a GA's job. As, uh, and, uh, he sent me to work for his twin brother in Colorado. So 
Uh, Larry and Mike Riley have been great to me for a long time, and uh, you know I, I got an opportunity to spend some time with them last night. Uh, been great mentors for a long, long time. And you have a follow-up? I, I do, had you actually progressed enough to get do the LSAT? Yeah, I took the test. Um, I took the test and didn't do great, didn't do bad. So, but I could have could have got into a few places. Another follow-up? Were you going to ask for the score? <laughs> yeah, the, well, no. Um, just to make sure, no regrets that you didn't become a lawyer as the plan? No, it, it's worked out all right. I think any time that your hobby is your job, you're pretty fortunate. And, uh, you know, I always enjoyed playing and following basketball. So when your hobby is your job, you're, you're pretty lucky. Back of the room on the aisle. Dana High, Warren Williams, and Oregon Duck Football News. As you guys headed into the postseason, you used the mantra, swing away, and I've seen you use that a lot in your, in your team huddles. Tell me what that means to you, and uh, has that been a recipe? I guess it means playing loose, but has that been a recipe to your success so far in the postseason? Well, we've, we've talked about swing away, being aggressive throughout the season. You know, it's not just in the postseason. Uh, you know, it's something that players for 28 years have heard. You know, we, we want our guys to loosen up. And, uh, you know, so many of them take it offensively. They want me to swing away, take shots. But it, defensively on the boards, we just want them to play hard, play aggressive, uh, try to free them up a little bit and, and go play the way they practiced. And uh, so it's something that we've, we've talked about always. Follow up to that. Do you, do you feel that they've played loose here in these first these last four games and the last six of the season? To, uh, would you attribute that to, to why you guys are here, though? You know, I thought we have, uh, you know, the last couple games. There, there's been times we've been a little tight. You know, uh, expectations have, have been pretty high for this ball club. And so there have been times we've, we've played a little tight. But uh, for the most part, I think our guys have been aggressive and, and loose and, and been in attack mode. So... Uh, for the most part, been pretty pleased. But there have been a few games this year where, you know, the pressure of the rankings and the expectations, uh, you know, I think it slowed us down at times. If you have a question for Coach Altman, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone in your direction. And please state your name and media outlet, then your question. Zach Rosenblatt, Arizona Daily Star. I was just uh, wondering, what, what do you think the loss to Arizona in that Pac-12 championship game, what, did, what do you think it did to spur the team on into the – postseason. I know some of the guys said it kind of raised their IQ, what they had to do without Chris around. I mean, what, how do you think that game kind of impacted the rest of the way? I think in that regard, it probably did help us a little bit in relationship to Chris, just because Arizona got to the basket on us. They had a lot of points in the paint that night and uh, got some easy shots that we typically don't give up. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think that you know, losing a ball game maybe refocuses you sometimes. Um, but in this particular case, I think it just let us know that we were going to have to play a little differently without Chris. And, um, you know, we were able to make a few adjustments. But the big adjustments, Jordan Bell's just played so well that uh, he's really stepped it up. And Cavell's been really solid for us, given, it up, given some of those minutes that Chris left open. Toward the back, right of the aisle. Uh, Colton Bennett of the Sports Capital Journalism Program. Uh, North Carolina's shot 59 free throws over the last two games. Uh, what do you plan to do to limit them to getting to the free throw line? Well, they, they do a great job on the, on the glass, which gets some second opportunities. They throw the ball inside a lot, um, which anytime you get the ball going to the basket, either by drives or, or posting it, uh, your percentage of foul attempts usually goes up, free throw attempts goes up. So, you know, our, our job is going to be, first of all, to try to keep them off the boards and uh, not foul on any of those second opportunities. Uh, second of all, we've we got to limit their touches in the paint as much as we can, which is a very difficult task since they run so many things to, to get the ball inside uh, to Meeks and Hicks and, and Bradley. So. We're going to have to do a tremendous job defensively to try to keep the ball out of there a little bit. We do have a few more minutes for questions for Coach before the Oregon student athletes join us, and all five will be coming into the room. Any questions for Coach? If you have one, please raise your hand. Okay, Coach, we'll all wait right. for questions. I think, Coach, I think we got to stay, so I'll wait for the athletes to come. 
Do you and I was can done. Talk, we can talk about a couple things. Yeah, if you want water, that'd be great. I actually have some for you here, Coach. The reporters right now, some are in the breakout rooms, some are in the locker rooms, and some may be coming back to try to get you. So. Okay. <coughs> there you go. Arizona's finest. We have a question on the aisle toward the back. Coach, just curious, do you remember the Eastern New Mexico fight song? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> Quick follow-up, what was your time like there in uh, Port Dallas? I enjoyed my, my two years there. Um, you know, it was a different part of the country for me. Um, I was from Nebraska, basically spent uh, all of my previous 20 years in Nebraska, so it was a different experience for me. and. Uh, Met a lot of good friends that I still stay in touch with today. And uh, so it was good two years. In the front on the left side. Aaron Fentress with CSN. Coach, uh, Peyton has had it's kind of a rough postseason, statistically at least. Uh, can you evaluate his play and also what went into the decision to start him over uh, Casey? Uh, you know, it's not an exact science. Um, you know, he and Casey have played a lot of minutes together. and. Uh, you know, Casey's minutes are down a couple from a year ago, but about the same. Um, but, you know, it wasn't like, uh, well, this is the direction we're going to go. It's just something I felt, you know, was better for the team at that time. And I like Casey coming off the bench. He's been able to give us, you know, offensively uh, a shot here and there that have helped us off the bench and, you know, stabilize some things if they're not going smoothly. So, you know, it's worked out okay. Uh, you know, as far as Peyton, you know, he, he puts a lot of pressure on himself to score. Um, you know, I want to free him up there a little bit and just take open shots. But I think defensively he's done a good job. He's done a good job on the boards. Everybody seems to equate struggling with offense. And, uh, you know, he's, he's done a good job in the other areas. Let's go toward the middle. Steve. Coach, I want to ask you about your Canadian pipeline. I think you like this pipeline a lot. Can you talk about what it's meant for Oregon to get these players? And do they bring a different something to the game that maybe some of the American players don't? We've seen European players bring something different. Do the Canadian players bring something different? Well, we've been very fortunate. Um, the Bo Joseph and Olu Ashlew started at our, our second year uh, at Oregon. Uh, Jason Calise came in, uh, Richard, um, and now we've got three young men. So this is, we have seven young men that have played for us uh, from Canada. And uh, uh, Dylan and Dylan and Chris have, have made a major impact. Uh, you know, I, I think they're, you know, the one characteristic is they've all been very easy to work with on the floor and off. And uh, uh, all of them uh, really excited about the opportunity. And... Uh, you know, sometimes maybe some players in the States take it for granted, uh, but uh, they seem to be really excited about the opportunity, and, and they all love ball. You know, all seven of them that we've been fortunate enough to work with really love the game in the gym all the time, uh, uh, working on their games. So, like I said, they've been fun to work with. We've, we've signed another young man from Toronto, so uh, we're looking for him to, to make an impact for us next year. Sure, go what ahead, Steve. Of, what type of talent pool do you think is up in Canada? And do you think sometimes people sort of ignore it to their detriment? Well, I don't think they're ignoring it anymore. Uh, you know, I think, you know, Canada is really starting to get a lot more, you know, uh, recruiting action. You know, we're running to a lot more schools up there than, than we previously have. So uh, because of the success that a number of the young men from Canada have had, I think uh, – it's opened up a lot of doors for, for Canadian players. We'd like to welcome at this time student athletes from Oregon, Dylan Brooks, Dylan Ennis, Jordan Bell, and Peyton Pritchard. We're taking questions now for the student athletes or for Coach Altman. And let's go to the second row on the right side. This could be for anybody. Guys, it's been a long time since a Pac-12 team has made it to the Final Four. 
what does it mean for your program that you guys were the ones that are able to break through and get to this next level? And what does it say about the conference as a whole? Let's ask Jordan to take that and coach as well. Um, I think it's definitely um, a step in the right direction for the conference. Um, I think people have been look, overlooking us um, since we haven't made the Final Four since 2008. So I think us making it is um, definitely uh, sh shining some light on the conference as a whole. And coach. It has been a, a dry spell for our, for our conference. Um, you know, I think Arizona and some other teams have, have been good enough to get there, but you need to be fortunate. Um, you know, three goes in against Michigan, and, and we're not sitting here. So you have to have a little luck. You have to be fortunate. Um, but it is good for our conference that, that we're here. Um, you know, it's been 2008 since we've had anybody in the Final Four, but it's been 97 since we had anybody win it. So our challenge was not only to get here, but uh, it's been 20 years since our, our league has won it. And uh, so we've got a ways to go yet. To the center of the room. Uh, for Dana and Dylan Ennis, um, and I have a follow-up, that's all right. Um, the first question, what about this team that you've heard them say, seen them do, has shown you that, you know, Y'all are ready to not just settle for being here. Well, ask Dylan to take that first, then coach, and then we'll get back to your follow-up. Um, we're not selling for being here because you know we're hungry for more. You know we want to win this national title. Uh, we, you know, when we put our shoes on in the summertime and looked around, we didn't say you know we want to be second, third, or fourth best in the country. You know, we want to be you know the national you know champions um but you know we haven't talked about it all year we've just you know done it by action you know coach says you know just keep locking in every practice every game um the games that we played in the you know preseason are just as important as you know games we would play you know now um but you know he just kept us focused the whole entire time and um you know we don't want to just have a good three days we want to have you know a lifetime of memories and you know hopefully you know we could say you know, we were the national, um, the team's the best uh, team in the country, you know, when it's all said and done. And coach? I don't think there's anything they've said, but, you know, I haven't noticed any decline in their attention to detail in the film sessions. Uh, I thought after we got loosened up yesterday in practice, you know, practice was fairly sharp. Um, you know, I, I, I think this group won't be satisfied with just making it here. You know, I haven't had any indication. There hasn't been a letdown in any regard. Our practices back in Eugene before we got on the plane were sharp. And, uh, you know, I think it was good that there was nobody on campus. You know, we're in spring break, so nobody could tell them what a good job they did uh, because we, we still got two games to go. And back to the center for the follow-up. And a follow-up for you, Dana. Um, what is it about the way Tyler has played in the postseason that's allowed him to carry over that production from week to week? Some guys might have a good weekend. They're down the next. But what is it about Tyler that he's stayed so hot? I think the first thing is his entire game has picked up. Um, you know, I think it goes back to the Arizona State game, our first game in the conference tournament. He got nine rebounds and, and really defensively was great in the Cal game. Uh, so I think he's playing the entire game, which has is, is just kept him involved throughout the ball game, and he's looking for opportunities. His teammates are finding him. You know, our ball movement's been pretty good, and he's on the receiving end of, of some good passes, and he's knocked down shots. But I think the biggest thing is he's just got involved in the entire game, and it's kept him focused. It's kept him intact throughout the, the 35 minutes, 40 minutes he's playing. In the back to the left of the aisle. Jordan, uh, North Carolina is a very strong rebounding team. What do you see on film, particularly from Kennedy Meeks? And do you look forward to a challenge with a matchup like that? Um, Kennedy Meeks, um, obviously a very um, good post player, um, very big. So it's going to be very tough as far as um, keeping him off the boards and just stop him as a whole. But um, I think it's going to come down to the whole team uh, rebounding. Um, I don't think. Um, Anybody on our team is going to just dedicate that one responsibility to just me. So I think everybody um, is going to have to crack down on their bigs and really just get in there and uh, help out with the rebounding. In the back of the room on the left side. Uh, Bill Smith, Fox 12. Uh, Coach, this is your 28th year in Division One coaching. What's it like to now finally get to the Final Four? 
I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, it, uh, no, I, you know, coaches, players, you know, this is what, if you get into Division One basketball, you know, what you think about. And been coming to Final Fours all these years. And, uh, you know, joke was always, you know, wish I could bring my team one of these times with me, you know. And uh, so it's, it's good to finally have the guys with me to a Final Four. And, uh, you know, I know they're looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to it. Our staff, you know, our entire staff, this is our first experience. And, and so we're all looking forward to it. Uh, it's been a great experience, and, and we hope to carry it through till Monday. Final two questions. Let's go all the way to the back of the room, to the right of the column. Dana, is safe to say you want to try to speed up this game and, and get North Carolina in transition? I'm not sure what tempo the game will take. Um, you know, I, I think part of it is going to be, you know, we won't be able to run unless we're able to, to get the defensive rebounds. You know, I, I think that's going to be a, a big key. Uh, we don't want it going totally up and down because they're a very good transition team. You know, and so we've got to get our defense back and put it together. And I think those are the two big keys that will dictate the tempo of the game. You know, if we're able to rebound with them and, and if we can get our defense set and get it back, then, you know, I think then we'll be able to maybe decide the tempo. Uh, but if they're offensive rebound and putting it back and we're not able to get their transition stop, they're going to dictate everything and then we're in tough shape. Final question to the right of the aisle, Curry. Um, you, you, you were in Maui with, with North Carolina, and you guys weren't well. Dylan was hurt. Um, what did you think of them there? Because they were playing great. And when you're in an environment like that, do you, do you socialize with other teams? Do you try to keep away from them? How, how did that go? Did you spend much time around them? Well, when you lose that first game in Maui, then you're playing at 9 o'clock the next morning. So uh, we didn't have much time to socialize with anybody. Uh, they were in the other bracket, so they were playing at night, and we were playing in the morning. Uh, didn't see much of the other teams. Uh, but, you know, as far as them as a team, you know, they're, they're big, they're talented. They pretty much dominated that tournament. Um, you know, we weren't at our best. We weren't full strength then. Uh, but uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, be, we'll bounce back and, and have an opportunity to, to show what we can do tomorrow. But we were looking forward to trying to get into that winner's bracket and, and have an opportunity to play them. And, and Wisconsin was there also, but uh, we didn't get that done. We'd like to thank Dylan and Dylan, Jordan, Peyton, and Coach Altman for joining us here in the main interview room. The Oregon locker room is now closed, and Oregon is next headed out to the open practice on the big floor. Good luck tomorrow evening, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1.15, the North Carolina media availability begins with the open locker room and starters in the breakout sessions. At 1.30, head coach Roy Williams will join us here in the main interview room. And at 1.40, some of the student athletes from North Carolina will join us as well. The locker room will be open for student athlete availability the entire